Good evening. Thanks for joining us again here on PBS 39. I'm Lee Kelso. Our guest tonight is board certified plastic surgeon, Dr. John Mancall, and our topic is plastic surgery. And we'll be talking a little bit about one particular area of plastic surgery, and that is that is skin reduction after significant weight loss. But we're also going to talk about other topics tonight. And if you have any questions, jump on the line. If it has to do with plastic surgery, Dr. Mancall can answer it for you. The phones are open at 969-2720. The toll free is 866-969-2720. John, we usually think of uh, plastic surgery. You know, I'm kind of planning now for my facelift in a few years, and it's just because I want to stay looking as young as I can. But when you have that gigantic weight loss, you might have a different motivator. What, what is that for? Well, a lot of these folks have lived their life feeling like they've got an extra body around them. And when they finally get to the point of losing a lot of weight, that extra skin that doesn't always shrink up uh, can get in the way. And they'll present with ulcerations, rashes, generalized irritation where the skin hangs over, mm -hmm. and just plain old difficulty getting close to fit them right. Yeah, you told me the story of one woman, I think you said 215 pounds she lost? Roughly 215 pounds. It took about three years. Uh -huh. I really just one day woke up and said, I'm tired of living like this. I was on three different medicines for blood pressure. Her diabetes was out of control, and then she just made a commitment to herself and her family. And I saw her after three years, and she was down to her goal weight, and now is left with the, the problems of her skin. Yeah, so she'd worked so hard and got to this point, and that skin is not going to shrink back. It's not going to go away. Usually after the influences of long-standing obesity, the skin fibers have sort of been stretched and broken. They don't have that elastic property that uh, our skin has that, that's not in the same influences. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like a, your clothes, you know, you, you lose weight and those clothes that were, you know, two sizes, three sizes, ten sizes bigger just are loose and baggy. You got to get new clothes. So is the procedure that you do when you're removing uh, these large amounts of skin, is it different than a typical uh, tummy tuck or is it just on an order of scale you're, you're removing more tissue? It's absolutely a different different operation altogether and we're just really starting to kind of understand how to manage these folks. We're seeing with more and more with bariatrics people losing you know 7,500 plus pounds mm -hmm. and a tummy tuck is you know in retrospect seems like an easy operation these days but when you take that same extra skin on a patient where an incision 20 centimeters long used to solve your problems. Now, three or four times that length of incision, you still have redundant skin. You're trying to figure out where to put it and where mm. to cut, take it from. Mm. Uh, with regard to these women who lose a lot of weight in their breast as well, uh, and there's nothing left to fill it in, I mean, it's a tremendous problem. Um, so we're really trying to appreciate the subtle differences, although they really are tremendous. And not to mention, some of these folks will have longstanding health risks that are not going to change, unfortunately. Some of them have longstanding heart disease. And although the stress may be better on their heart, it's still some irreversible changes. So from a medical standpoint, they pose a more difficult problem as well. Well, and I suppose you see a higher incidence of diabetes and other conditions such as that, and which always affects wound healing, and that's got to be a challenge. Absolutely. And uh, risk of DVT, a lot of them mm -hmm. have venous insufficiency in their legs, uh, which means pooling of blood and some of these longer operations. That's definitely a risk factor. And, and one of the real safety issues that we focus on and, and our society is focusing on is uh, post-operative blood clots and minimizing the risk of those. When, if I'm losing, uh, if I'm on track to lose a lot of weight, either through surgery or just willpower and exercise, um, when should I be talking to you? I think there's two good times to talk to a plastic surgeon. One is either in the beginning or halfway through, simply to understand what can be done. I think it's a motivating factor for a lot of patients when they see some of the before and after pictures to know that if they can get 10 pounds off more or 50 pounds off more that you know this is what they can do. Mm -hmm. um, that really sort of helps kind of take them through the middle time where I do think they start questioning am I going to keep doing this or not. Mm -hmm. And then of course we need to see them when they're close to the goal, uh, roughly 10 percent of their weight left to go. Because then we can start making the plans. We can do the medical evaluation, make sure their heart and lungs and kidneys are doing fine, check their protein levels, make sure they have everything it takes to heal right. Mm -hmm. if, um, if I have uh, gone through this process, uh, and insurance, I understand, is covering more and more bariatric procedures these days, in the case of the massively obese. They, they certainly cover the bariatric portion of it, even though that's coming uh, into question and mm -hmm. you have to check with your own policy as to whether or not they do cover it. We are seeing, I think, more exclusions in policies because of that. 
The difficult part comes for us is these patients have worked so hard with their doctors or on their own and it's becoming harder and harder to find insurance is willing to cover this type of service. Uh, most of the time all that we can get covered is the abdominal skin, the apron that hangs over. The extra skin on the arms, the extra skin on the thighs, the extra skin in the buttock, the back, the breast, the sides or the flanks, uh, that's really very hard to get insurance to cover. And are you, uh, when, you're, when you're removing this skin, are you touching any of the muscle layers underneath? Are you, are you pulling those tighter or is it just a skin reduction process? It's a little bit of both. I, I think it depends on the patient. A lot of these folks have done a lot of exercising in the process. You, know, you can't simply lose weight only by eating less. You have to couple it with increasing your metabolism. Uh, so a lot of them have good muscles. What, what could be the problem is the lining around the muscles we call fascia may be stretched out or attenuated. And unless we tighten that up as well, you'll mm -hmm. still see kind of a poochy belly, for example, even if the skin's been tightened. So you do end up addressing, at least on the abdominal portion, uh, all the layers, skin, fat, muscle layer, or the fascia. Is there a limit to how much skin you can remove? Theoretically, yes. Uh, the most I've ever taken off weight-wise uh, has been just shy of 100 pounds, 98 pounds on a gentleman. But what, uh, 98 pounds of skin alone? Skin and fat. And wow. that particular case, the, the patient couldn't even walk. Not that that patient was, had lost the weight yet, but because of this physical limitation, we had no chance of losing any more weight and probably would gain. So we resected that much at one time. Was that in, in, in a panis? Yes. I, a, a panis is that when you see somebody who's got a big belly that hangs over the belt. Correct. It's the part that hangs down that mm -hmm. blocks, um, and in this gentleman's case, blocked his ankles. So that's sort of an extreme case. A lot of patients hope that when we remove all the skin, we're going to take off 20, 30, 40 pounds with that. And, and believe it or not, the skin doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's what fills up the skin that generally comes through the weight. So a typical weight loss patient, when we take off skin, if, if I take off another five or eight pounds of skin, I'm, that's usually high end. Uh, a lot of it's just simply contouring at this point, and there's not a lot of weight loss with that. That's got to um, make it easier to continue to lose weight, to keep your activity level up, to exercise without all that loose skin moving around and holding you back. It, it's, it's uncomfortable for them. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The thing that they can do along the course, though, is the skin folds really create rashes and irritation, and that needs to be documented. And the more that's documented with their family doctor or their internist, the more sort of indications there are to do these kind of surgeries. So mm -hmm. I encourage folks to keep a diary of it. Don't hesitate to tickle your doctor about it when it comes up. There are some creams and uh, powders that can help. But it's that kind of documentation that makes it easier for us to get insurances to look at this as not just a cosmetic operation, but truly a functional operation. Everybody's got a digital camera these days. Do, do insurance companies require that kind of documentation? Actually, they do. We, we take photos in the office because I can create, create a great letter, but the photos can speak for themselves in many yeah. cases.